This is International Airport, where thousands of people come and go to the far corners of the world. Some are going on urgent business, others on European vacations that they have dreamed of for years. And still others, like Henry and Francis Stewart, never really expected to go at all. That's Henry doing all the talking. He's saying goodbye to his friend Bill. And that's Francis. She is just as excited. Eastbound Constellation Flight number 980 is ready for departure at gate number 8. Non-stop service London. All aboard, please. Come on, folks. Better snap it up. No, the Stuarts never really planned a flight to Europe. At least Henry didn't. Until one day, his wife said, Henry, I want to go to Europe. But it takes more than that to get Henry's nose out of the financial page for long. Of course, he didn't realize what was happening. Frances wanted to go to Europe so badly that her imagination was running away with her. Henry, I'm serious. Put that paper down and listen to me. Let's go to Europe. All right, dear. Someday we'll make the trip, won't I? Not someday. I'm tired of dreaming about our trip. I want to go now, this year. Well, honey, how can we do it on our budget? Besides, you know all the rigmarole there is to going abroad. Remember, I only get two weeks. Sixteen days, counting the weekend. And here's someone who could help us. Mary Gordon. She's a travel advisor, and there's a pay later plan. We can write to her. Here, look. Well, maybe it takes an expert to do it, but I don't see where... Oh, Henry, wouldn't it be marvelous if we could go this year? Well, why not write, Mary Gordon, see what kind of trip we can make? Doesn't cost anything to ask. No, it didn't cost anything except a postage stamp. It was nice to receive your letter and to hear that you and your husband are planning a trip to Europe. I can't think of anything that would be more fun. And I know you both will have a wonderful time. Two weeks may not seem like a long time. But when you fly, you see so much and do so much that you really pack a month's vacation into 14 days. For instance, in 14 days, you could visit London, Paris, and Rome with stopovers in Switzerland, Madrid, and Lisbon. In fact, it is possible to visit 16 extra cities on a flight to Rome. I used to think that arrangements for an international flight would be very complicated too. But I discovered that all you need is a passport and a health certificate. You want to know how much you will have to spend while you are traveling. I hope the leaflet I am sending on ways to stretch your travel dollar will be of help to you. In the meantime, I hope you can attend a travel talk I will be giving in your neighborhood next week. Henry, she answered my letter. Who? Oh. Mary Gordon. Listen to this. I'm speaking to your local women's club on the 10th of this month at 11 a.m. I would love to have the opportunity to meet you there. When you've decided where we're going, let me know, dear. Last week, I received this letter from an eight-year-old. Dear Mary Gordon, I would like to go to Africa and see the animals. Do you think you could get me on one of those planes? I weigh 60 pounds. I have $3.60 saved. Your friend, Jimmy O'Toole. P.S. Please don't tell my mother. Now I would like to show you some pictures of my trip abroad last year. We left New York in this plane and in a matter of hours, we were flying over Spain. I think it's exciting to know that today, there is no place on the globe farther away than 24 hours. Who would have dreamed even 10 years ago that people could fly above the clouds in such beautiful surroundings? It's so pleasant just to sit back and relax. Meals are brought right to your seat. Just imagine cooking a dinner like this at 18,000 feet. Some of you mothers will be interested to know that several women on our plane were traveling with infants. 
The hostesses call the transatlantic flight the six bottle trip. Our first stop was Madrid. This bull ring is as popular as the Yankee Stadium. The Spanish bullfighters are idolized by their fans who wish them luck before each performance. If a matador fights the bulls with grace and daring, the crowd honors him, wildly tossing hats and seat cushions, even their furs into the ring. From Spain, we flew east nearly 5,000 miles to India. This beautiful mausoleum, the Taj Mahal, was built by an emperor in memory of his beloved wife. A fairy tale in marble. Back to Italy and Rome. This is St. Peter's Square and the Vatican Guard. In the Colosseum, you can almost see the ghosts of the gladiators of other centuries. Although Venice is also an ancient city, it has a very different feeling. Venice is music, relaxation, and sun rolled into one. Finally, Paris. By this time, I was feeling right at home in Europe and began to appreciate the charm of the little shops and corner restaurants as much as the beauty of the great monument. London was just as I hoped it would be, filled with tradition and ceremony, but friendly. Now to Germany, once again a beautiful, peaceful country, where little boys ride modern bicycles down ancient cobbled streets, and village people still dance the old country dances. Perhaps some of you are thinking, could I ever take a trip like that? Or could I travel to Europe alone? Of course you could. The recipe for a successful trip abroad is simple. A moderate amount of planning and a pinch of the spirit of adventure. You can get an idea of what you might like to do by looking over these booklets. You'll find many helpful travel tips for the countries you want to visit. For instance, this one on Spain tells about hotels, restaurants, places to see, and where you can find the best bargains. Shopping is half the fun of traveling. I thought maybe you'd like to see some of the things I brought back from my trips. This is a Spanish comb of tortoise shell. The women wear it whenever they want to dress up for a special occasion. Bullfights, or going to church, or on holidays. Just goes over. It's lovely, isn't it? This is a cap from Brittany, a lace-making center in France. And this is a marvelous gift for a man, one he'll treasure for a long time. A Borsellino hat, a very fine Italian felt. I bought this devil mask in Salon. Isn't he fierce? In the old days, devil masks were used by the Sinhalese to frighten away evil spirits. And this exotic necklace from Egypt. Striking, isn't it? And finally, a sari from India. These are just a few of the things you can buy. And your purchases are easily carried in this collapsible bag. If you're worried about what clothes to take, just relax. This booklet which I have prepared contains a checklist of all the things you'll need. There's one simple rule. You must choose a basic color and build your wardrobe around it. Then you will need only one set of accessories for all your costume changes. A word of caution. Think before you rush out and buy an entirely new wardrobe for your trip. The clothes you wear at home are suitable almost anywhere in the world. And remember, shoes can be your best friend or your worst enemy. So do take along a pair of sturdy walking shoes. And when you pack, be sure to use a 26 or a 29 inch suitcase because this size accommodates the full length of a skirt. 
One bag will hold a complete travel wardrobe. And a wool suit is very useful. Dresses of the miracle fibers or wool, silk, or knitted fabrics are the best travelers because they don't wrinkle easily. I pack a bag in three layers. Into the bottom go your shoes, your cosmetic case, nylon lingerie, and all bulky articles, including your jewelry case. Suits and dresses make up the second layer. When packing a skirt or a dress, try to cover as much as the suitcase as possible. For a full skirt, fold the extra material into triangular folds. Then, fold the bodice back across the skirt so that the fold comes at the waist. For a gathered skirt, let it fall into natural folds. like that. And if a jacket is laid across the width of a suitcase, the collar, lapels, and shoulders won't wrinkle. The third layer is for the things that you need to get at easily. Your night things, and packable raincoat or umbrella. If you need a pair of shoes, you know exactly where they are. And the second and third layer of clothing can be lifted out together several times without the need to repack. It's as simple as that. A well-packed bag will give you freedom to enjoy yourself. Concentrate on having fun, seeing new places and meeting new people. What's all this, Henry? The bags we'll need for the trip. But we only need these two. Only two? Oh, you mean for you? No, silly, for both of us. I'll show you what I mean. Henry, looks like that does it. Oh, I still have to be shown. Well, we're way under the limit. This is where we came in, isn't it? Francis and Henry on their way to Europe. Thousands of people take off from this airport every day. Secretaries, housewives, mothers with small children, businessmen, sportsmen, teachers and scientists. People of a thousand and one occupations. And although it's the end of our story, for Henry and Francis, it's only the beginning. The beginning of a vacation that made a dream come true.